Hello, and it's my pleasure to talk about our accomplishments from last school year. As you know, there are a lot of wonderful things that occur in our school district, and we don't have enough opportunities to talk about the wonderful things that our teachers, administrators, with community support and parent support are doing in our schools. So what we will do today is talk a little bit about our accomplishments, and then we'll talk about the referendum coming up. Now, the slides we're going to be looking at are probably going to be difficult to see on this video, but the good news is this pre presentation is also available on our website and you can go and access and download it at your convenience. So when we look at what the return on our investment has been, our graduation rate for the first time ever at each of our high schools is over 80%. For our countywide graduation rate, we're over 83%. That speaks volumes when you think about having students graduate on time and this is not just an accomplishment, I think, at the high school, but when we look at our pre-K-12 environment, all of those teachers played a part in ensuring that the students were ready to be successful at the next level. With work keys, 87.6% of our students met the criteria to gain a certificate at bronze or above. Now, that's great news because more and more South Carolina employers are using work keys as a pre-employment type activity to determine who is ready to enter the workforce. Our scholarships again, $30.9 million. That says that others are looking at our graduates and want that talent in their schools. That's a new record for us. We have two high schools that have made the top 10 list on two different publications. U.S. News and World Report, Hilton Head High School number five and Bluffton number seven. But I think even as important is the, is the ranking for America's most challenging high schools. That means that our, those two high schools also have an extremely rigorous curriculum. Our ACT state rankings have us ranked 8th in the state, 17th that tests over 1,000 kids, and 17th out of 82 districts. And in each of the four areas, we performed at or above the state level. And not many districts can claim that. I think that's also a true testament to the ability of our students because what this test does now, it requires all 11th graders to participate. Whether you're planning to go to college or not, whatever your background is academically, if you're an 11th grader in our school district, you have to take the ACT. And for our students to perform this well, it says, our teachers are doing what they need to do to prepare, to prepare kids. When we look at our measures of academic progress, that is the test we use kindergarten through eighth grade to formatively assess where our kids are growing. Our growth this last year placed each one of those grade levels in reading and math above the NWA norm. And that is the group of test takers, not just from the United States, but internationally that are participating in that assessment. We did that well everywhere except sixth grade in math and reading. When we opened up our new school this year, May River High School, it opened up on time and under budget. Same occurred with, May, with River Ridge Academy. We implemented schools of choice, and I know many of our parents love to be able to have a say in how their child is going to be educated. That number is in excess of 2,300 parents right now taking advantage of our schools of choice. We still have our Building a Better Buford Scholarship. That scholarship ensures that every graduate from our high schools that meet the criteria are guaranteed two years at the Technical College of the Low Country, a wonderful partner of ours. So when you walk across the stage in May or June, you know that your education does not stop right there. It can continue for two more years. We have uh, many of our schools that attempt to uh, re receive the Palmetto's Finest Award. We're one of only two districts in the state that have had four winners in four years. I think that speaks volumes as to what we're doing. Our advanced ed accreditation places us in the top 10, not only in the state of South Carolina, 
but nationally. That means what we're doing in our classrooms, what our teachers are doing, the community engagement is having a tremendous impact on student learning. We received the Early Childhood Champions for Children Award for all of the work we've done in pre-K. We've ensured that if you have a four-year-old that needs pre-kindergarten services and you want them to be engaged as a four-year-old, bring them in. Go through one of the child find services, have them identified, and we will find a spot for them. Our finance department does an amazing job. They continue to set the record, receiving the highest award each year. We are also rated as an A- school for transparency among the 10 largest schools. Within our volunteerism ranks, we started out with about 1,300. When we tightened up our background checks, we're now over 6,000. We've expanded career and technical education offerings for all of our students on both sides of the river. We have a new center at Battery Creek High School, new center in May River High School. Those programs, along with the programs that we offer at the Academy for Career Excellence, give students an option. If they want to be a culinary uh, chef, if they want to go into the world of welding through mechatronics, aviation, many opportunities from cybersecurity to firefighting. All students are not necessarily going to college, so we need to have a pathway for the students that want to start their own business and be their own entrepreneurs. Advanced State Accreditation, we just had two additional schools receive STEM certification, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Brings our total to six, and there are only 17 across the entire state of South Carolina. So as you can see, our elementary and middle schools are doing a great job. We still have our Connect to Learn program, placing a digital device in the hands of every child, kindergarten through eighth grade. Teachers are starting to incorporate more and more digital content into the curriculum, and students need to have access. Students also have access to 25 languages through Rosetta Stone at no cost to them. And we have 9,000 plus ebooks waiting for students. One of the things that is still remarkable, when I'm visiting an elementary school, and a student can take their tablet and they look at a picture of a book on the wall with a QR code, and they'll take the tablet hit the QR code and it automatically downloads that book to their tablet. So it's right at their fingertips. We also have a science tech book in grades kindergarten through eighth grade, which allows science to come alive for our students. They can click on the diagrams, the pictures, and it will come alive for them in 3D fashion. And we continue to work to uh, ensuring our students have access after school hours. We're still working with the FCC uh, to find a way, a mechanism to provide that. But in the meantime, our public library system, one of our great partners in Beaufort County, they are doing something wonderful. They have what are called Kajit uh, wireless hotspots, and they can be checked out from the public library system, going to the homes and up to five devices for the children, for our students, now have access to the internet. We do have some challenges. One of those is growth. And Ms. White will come up in a second and talk about uh, one strategy to resolve that growth. But we're expected to grow about 3,000 kids over the next 10 years. We have a huge shift in demographics. We now are a majority minority school district. As you can see from 28% African American, 41 Caucasian, and 26 Hispanic. We also have about 16% of our students that are limited English speaking students. Our recruitment and retention efforts, we hired last year 277 new hires. We have probably 230 current teachers that could walk out at any moment because they're eligible for retirement. So the challenge is not just for us in Beaufort County, but the challenge is across our state and across our nation to try to help encourage others to go into the educational field so that our colleges and universities can have a pathway to supply the need for our new teachers. So we will continue to work on teacher recruitment. We will continue to look at our enrollment growth challenges, our partnerships 
We cannot say enough about the folks that we partner with, whether it's Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, NOC, uh, community organizations, churches, ecumenical partners, Don Ryan Center, all those folks that come into our buildings out of the goodness of their heart to help ensure that what we're providing to kids will make them successful in life. We are trying to close the achievement gap as much as possible. To give you an idea of where we've been successful, our recent SAT results uh, over the last four years, African American students improved 87 points. White students improved 30 points. So both groups grew, which is great. But what's better is that we close that gap by 57 points. The difference between 87 and 30 helped close the gap of our minority and non-minority students by 57 points. Tremendous news. We have schools, elementary schools, middle schools, when they look at their map results, are witnessing a close of the achievement gap and some are even eliminating the achievement gap. So we continue to work toward ensuring that every student is achieving at a high level. On the horizon, we have a sales tax referendum coming up. We are not going to try to convince you one way or the other. We can't and we will not ask you to vote in opposition or in favor. But what we do need to do is ensure that you have the facts when you go into the polling booth and you pull the curtain so that you make an educated decision on what you believe is right for you and your family. Hi, I'm Phyllis White. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the School District and it is my pleasure to go through the slides regarding the referendum and explain the facts and as Dr. Moss mentioned, we are not here to influence any voters. We just want to make sure you have all the facts to make a well-informed decision on November 8th when the referendum ballot will appear. This is a slide that it was actually um, showing a, an article that was in the Bluffton Day in 2007. We were highly criticized for not being well prepared to handle the growth that was occurring in Bluffton. Since that time, we have, not, we have done things differently, and we have our own in-house planner as well as our own facilities team, and we do, at the time of 2007, started doing five-year projections as well as uh, developing a five-year capital plan. We have now changed that to be a 10-year um, enrollment uh, uh, projections as well as a 10-year capital plan. So we don't ever want to be in this position again, and it's a, it's a good reminder for us to continue to always update our projections on an annual basis. As Dr. Moss mentioned, this is probably too small for you to see, but this is at the 45 day um, we do our projections into the, into the next year and years out. This is at the 45 day for the 15-16 school year we will have our 45-day count coming in October, and so these charts will be updated. But what we show here is in red are the schools that are over capacity. For um, capacity um, in space, we use 85%, which allows enough space for families moving in to be able to choose to go to the school that is in their attendance zone. This is the southern side of the school district of the county, and you can see there's a lot more red areas um, at the 45 day of last year. And that's where we're gonna focus our new construction as we have done in prior years. Since 2008, we have built seven schools in the Bluffton area, and we, and we will have more to come. This is just a, a bar graph that demonstrates the need for our capacity and it looks out over 10 years and these we have an in-house school planner and that was her profession prior to coming to the school district and we use a software program that does all of the projections out and then this is uh, assuming growth of 2.8 percent which is based on historical trends. Just to demonstrate how accurate we have been over the past six years, our school planner has actually had an error rate 
of less than 1%, 0.66% um, of actually underprojecting um, enrollment. And primarily it was one year that we had an influx of students that were um, brought to us from an, um, out of the country, so we had no way of anticipating their arrival. Now I'm going to talk about some of the um, facts about how we can do a sales tax and what is going to be the sales tax, how it's going to be used. In the past, our school district and other school districts have used a traditional referendum to pay for their capital projects. And that meant usually a tax increase. With the sales tax, um, we have talked to our financial advisor and he developed a plan where we could use some of the sales tax and um, the uh, revenue that we receive from taxes to pay for our projects. And the sales tax is available for certain school districts. There's five right now who have put it in place. And it can be in place for 15 years, but we have chosen um, to uh, do 10 years for ours, and it will end at 10 years with an opportunity if, the, if our board at that time chooses to put it back on the ballot for um, consideration. Their uh, sales tax for a capital improvement, um, education capital improvement sales tax, the exemptions are the same as any other um, sales tax. So uh, unprepared foods, some medicines, whatever is exempt now will continue to be exempt under this sales tax. Using the plan by, developed by our financial advisor, we are a bit able to provide a 42% decrease in property tax on the debt service. This applies to any property owned um, in Beaufort County. So it would be your home, your businesses, your uh, vehicles, and your boats. And um, it cannot be used to fund anything other than the capital projects that you will see on the ballot. I'm going to talk a little bit about the ballot before we go into the projects. The ballot is going to be two different ballots. One is going to ask the voters to approve a sales tax of 1%. The second question will be, can we uh, borrow amounts up to $217 million to fund the projects? The reason we have to do that is the 1% sales tax will not generate enough uh, revenue to be able to fulfill our plan um, as presented. And so they're identical ballots, identical projects on the ballot. The difference is the sales tax will state right on the face of it that we will reduce property taxes, we will pay down debt, and we will build the projects that are on the capital list. We do a 10-year capital plan. We, uh, we update it every year to add any additional needs that may have arisen during the year. And we also um, treat our facilities the way you would treat your facilities at home. So we have a preventative maintenance schedule on our roofs, on our HVACs, on our floors, on our painting, the same way you would treat your home. The difference is we have over 4 million square feet, and so it's a little bit more expensive to maintain our home. These are the categories that we, um, you will see on the ballot for November. Um, there's additions and renovations, HVAC, uh, roofing, the new schools which are in the Bluffton area, and then land to put the schools on. It's a total of $217 million. The addition re renovations, um, we always, when we build a new school, we want to make sure that there's equity at the other schools. We also want to make sure that we um, look at our students to um, realize that they have different needs or different interests. Um, some students want to be heavily involved in sports, and so we need to make sure that all of our schools have the facilities in order to make sure that our students are engaged in every way. Some of our schools, because of their age, do not have the same facilities as others. So you'll see the two items up there, the wrestling room. The wrestling room 
right now at those schools they're using the cafeteria or the gymnasium which is really not conducive to or as safe as having a dedicated area. We have two schools on the Hilton Head side that are uh, overcrowded. Hilton Head Middle is probably one of the worst and we would start off um, if the referendum passes focusing on that school. May River High School is a brand new school but you have to keep in mind this is a 10-year capital plan and we are looking out beyond um, just tomorrow and realizing that May River is in an area that is is filling up with homes on a daily basis. And so we do have a wing plan um, that's already been designed that would be put in at around the five-year mark. River Ridge is a brand new school. It's filled. It's at capacity, so we have wing additions on there. Riverview, we have a great partnership with our charter school, and they need an additional gym. Concession stands don't seem like they would be a very important need in our schools. However, we've had some building code changes um, that we are required to meet, and we must have facilities near our field within 500 feet. So the concession stand actually is bathroom facilities also. So it is a multifunctional. Well, Branch, it took 10 years, unfortunately, for us to build that school. And because it took so long and three referendums, um, there wasn't enough uh, revenue available to be able to build it to the way it was designed. And so one of the gyms was removed in design and the auditorium. We created a cafetorium um, in order for the students to have a gathering area. We now need to put back those, those items that were removed to because it's very difficult as a principal to operate a school with only one gymnasium and have a gathering space um, for all the students at the school. HBAC upgrades, those are not glamorous projects, so um, just note that we are doing the same thing in our schools as you would do in your home, and we make sure that we are taking good care of your assets that you have paid for in the past. Roof replacements, the same thing. We want to make sure that we keep our schools airtight, especially in this climate with high humidity. The two new schools in the Bluffton area, when we built, when we purchased the land for the uh, May River High School, it was master planned to have multiple schools on that site. May River now has been built, the high school, and now the next phase would be an elementary and a middle school. The middle school is a higher need area. We need more seats for middle school, so that's where our folks will be. Those schools will be built in phases. It could be an elementary and a middle, or it could be a PK-8, or it could be two PK-8s. The other new school we don't like to talk about in public where we need the school to be built, because once um, word is out that we need land, Unfortunately, the prices go above what we can afford. So just know that there are, there, in the referendum, there is a dollar amount set aside for land. This is the best way we could find to describe how the sales tax will be used to reduce the taxes. Again, in a traditional way, we pay for our schools millage on your uh, tax bill. The blue demonstrates that we get all the revenue from your tax bill. A millage is a tax rate and it's currently at 31.7 mills. What we would do is take the revenue from the sales tax and insert it as part of the payment, the revenue stream to make the payments and lower the amount of your tax rate. Think of this as your own home and your mortgage payment. We borrow money to build the facilities or renovate the facilities, and that's our mortgage. And these are our principal and interest payments. What you see is these this are our debt service requirements is just another word for our principal and interest mortgage payments. 
So we're going to use this revenue stream from the um, sales tax to supplement our payments on our debt requirements. When we get out here, you can see that our debt is now decreasing. And that at that time, we would have an opportunity, our board at that time, to have some choices to either lower the tax rate further um, or uh, pay down debt faster, do a combination of both, and also do pay as you go. So we pay for things with cash. So our new millage rate then would go down 42.5% to 18.25. This is purely an example to demonstrate the impact that it would have on a taxpayer. You will need to calculate this on your own, and so this is just a demonstration of how you can calculate because your own tax bill, because again, we, don't, we want you to look at this and make a decision based on the information that we're providing you. This is a tax bill that came right out of this um, tax system for the county. This line item, there's two line items on your bill. One is for operations, which is our regular operations of our school district, paying teachers, operating the school district, and the other is for those mortgage payments, the debt requirements that could be on your bill called the bond. This is the line item, the bond line item, where we would provide the 42% tax decrease. This is a home is assessed at $285,000. Keep in mind, your bill is going to look differently depending on the value of your home. So if we looked at the previous slide, we noticed that there was a debt service savings, taking that line and decreasing it by 42%. If you divide that by one cent, because it is a one cent sales tax, you can see the amount of taxable purchases that that would equate to and per week of $295. What this demonstrates is that if you purchase um, less than $15,345 in per taxable purchases, you could generate a savings to yourself. These are just an example of various types of homes. One is valued at $163,000. One at $678,000, $486,000, and $123,000. What's unique about this, uh, this one in the corner is that this is a 6% property owner. We have not only in our county 4%, obviously we have businesses, but we also have 6% property owners that reside here in the county. And so, once again, this, this would apply to all property owners in Beaufort. I want to summarize about the ballot because it's very important for you to understand what it will mean when you go in um, on November 8th. Again, not trying to advocate the way you vote, making sure you understand the consequences of the vote that you choose to do if you choose to vote. And there's going to be two questions on the ballot. One of the questions will be on the sales tax. Would you agree? to implement a sales tax, a capital improvement sales tax for the school district for a 10-year period that will reduce taxes, pay down debt, and, and complete the projects on the list. And the projects will be listed individually. The second question will be, would you allow the school district to borrow $217 million for these projects? The reason why we have that is because the Revenue stream will not come in in a sufficient flow to be able to do the projects um, as quickly as they need to be accomplished. So, if both questions pass, the district would move ahead and pay for the projects and reduce the property taxes by 42% on the debt service. If only the bond passes, what that does is reverts us back to what we traditionally have done as a traditional referendum and the district would have to increase the property taxes 
by approximately 10%. So if the one cent sales tax fails and the bond question passes, that is the result of it. It will be an increase in um, the property taxes. That's not trying to be a scare tactic, that's just a fact because we would then go back to the way we used to do our projects. If only the sales tax passes, the projects would have to be delayed because it would be a cash flow issue. We would have to wait until a sufficient amount of money was collected before we could begin the projects. If both questions failed, the district would have to resort to other options to cope with our enrollment growth and maintaining our existing facilities. It could um, result in deferring some maintenance and um, not preserving our assets as well as we'd like to, and our en enrollment growth would could result in having higher class sizes or unfortunately going back to the way we used to be with um, in 2007 with uh, mobiles outside the school where more students are in mobiles than they are in the actual school themselves. So we hope that this has been useful. If you need more information, please visit our website. We have an enormous amount of information out there. We also have a tax calculator that I demonstrated to you that you can go in and actually calculate what type of savings that could be generated. We also have a video of our financial advisor who developed this plan. We have sample ballot questions so you can review them in advance. And we have all our past and present financial reports of the capital projects. Um, if this referendum passes, it will be treated as all the other um, projects in the past that will be line item detail showing you how we have spent your money to um, improve our facilities. And so this is our website. Please visit if you need info more, more information and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you.